Static text fields in Flash have paragraph formatting such as indenting, margins, and line spacing. We also can apply graphic filters to Flash text fields. This is the completed exercise in source text. And we have a paragraph here that contains a title and all the text in the same text field. And over here, we've separated the title from the text and giving it a drop shadow. So let's see how this is done. So we'll close this and we'll start a brand new Flash document. We'll save it. And I'll call it practice. For the first example, we'll just look at a text field to see the differences between single line mode and multi line mode. So I'll grab the text uh, tool, click on the stage here, we'll go over to properties. I'm going to use Arial for this. And all regular for style. Uh, for size, I'll use 24 points. Color black, and the rest of the settings are the way I want them. And we'll type in some of the text from our sample text file. And as I'm typing, you'll notice the text field gets wider and wider. This is a single line text field by the handle in the top right corner. A circle indicates that it's a single line text field. I can grab that handle or other handles and resize this. I'll just make it narrower. And now the handle changes to a square, which indicates multi-line mode. And if I double click that square handle in the top right corner, it goes back to single line mode. If I exit the edit mode and uh, just grab the uh, selection tool and do some resizing with the text field as an object and then return to edit mode, you'll notice that it's going back to multi-line mode as well. So I'm clicking at the end and what I'll do is add some more text. And I'll stick an ellipse here at the end. And we'll escape out of edit mode. Go to selection tool. Just move this over here and so much for my typing of Latin. Now let's add another text field. And I'm going to select the file that has our sample text. And I'll just take the first paragraph in that file and copy it to the holding clipboard. And I'll come back to Flash. And I'll select the text tool and click somewhere in the top middle of the stage. And you'll notice it's in single line mode, but I want to do this in multi line mode. So I just grab the handle and make it approximately the size I intend to use. And let me change some of the values here. We'll use Arial Regular. I'll use a smaller point size, so I'll go to 16 points. And I think that's all the changes. And then I'll paste. And you'll notice you can paste into a text field. So I'll just copy from it. Now we have the text field, so I'm going to click anywhere in the paragraph. This is considered a paragraph and up to the point we add a new line. And come over to the paragraph properties, and we'll just change a few so we can see how this works. So what I'll do here for the spacing, I'll make a minus 15. And for the margin on the left, I'll make 15 as the point size. And you can see we got uh, the reverse indent here. The first line is indented negatively, and the remaining lines are margined over. And if I go back over to my properties and just reverse this, I'll make the first one 15 and the margin to the left a 0. And we got kind of a normal indent. So I'll get some more text from our sample file. Go to the second paragraph, copy it. And in our text box, I'll put in a couple of new lines, and then I'll paste the text. And it inherits the paragraph properties from the first paragraph. And we'll change them a little bit. And so what I'll do is I'll change the spacing to 0, and so that you can see that the paragraphs can have their own individual properties within the same text field. I'm going to change this back to match the first one 
15 for the uh, spacing of the first indented line. And let's go back and add the third paragraph. So we'll copy this out of our source file. We'll click into text field and we'll have a blank line in there and we'll paste that one in. Now what we'll do is we'll format the first letters of each one of these paragraphs. So we'll go up to the letter L in lorem. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a wider font. I'll use Verdana. It's also similar to the Arial. And I will change its style to bold. And its size to 20. I'm going to click back in the text box and deselect the letter L. And you can see the effect. Let's repeat this for the letter D, the first letter of the second paragraph. And again, Verdana and bold and 20 points for the size. And the last paragraph, first letter, Verdana, bold and 20 points. We're going to add a title to the top of this, and I'll press enter in front of the first character of the first paragraph, and I'll just type some letters on that line. And you'll notice that it inherited the paragraph attributes as well as the character attributes. So I'm going to delete these letters and return to our text source and I'll take the first two words from our first paragraph and I'll copy them and then I'll paste them on this new line and you can see the attributes are still inherited and I'm going to capitalize the letter I and I'll select all the text in the first line and we'll change some of the attributes. First we'll get rid of the spacing of 15. We'll make that zero. And you'll see that this is now left aligned. We'll come up here to the format where the paragraph is and we'll choose the center align. And I think I'll make the size uh, 30 points to emphasize it. And I'll come back over here and just widen this just slightly enough so this all appears on the first line. Next what I want to do is I'm going to take this text and I would like to do a drop shadow behind it but a drop shadow would apply to the entire text field so I'm going to copy it and then I'll escape and go to the selection tool and I'll paste and I'll drag this over here and just size it a little bit so it's wide enough to show in one line and I'll line it up with the other one and as an entire text field, I'll come over here to the filters and come down here to the bottom left and add a filter and it's going to be drop shadow and I'll just change the strength to 50% uh, and you can see we have a drop shadow here. This is a way for you to work with text to break it up into multiple text fields. So let's get the abstract of this and we'll go back to the second text field and we'll copy it and then we'll click and paste it. And we'll position it over here and first thing we'll do is click into it for edit mode and delete the duplicate title and the extra line. And Then I'll escape out and go to the selection tool and uh, now what we'll do is we'll line these up so they're kind of centered on top of each other. So what we'll do is we'll pick the center point and multi-select them. Open up the align tool and we'll bring that up here. We want the two stage button up and we'll go to the align horizontal center. And then we'll close this. And I'll deselect by clicking away from them and maybe we'll just move the abstract text up a little bit to line up with the other one. And there we have it. So save your work. And we'll just uh, play this movie with control test movie off the main menu. I'll use the shortcut key and here it is running. Flash has character level, paragraph level, and field level properties at your disposal. Conflicting formatting requirements are often solved by using multiple Flash text fields.